Hey devs, today I'm going to show you how to add a cart selection screen into your multiplayer karting project. In this tutorial, we'll cover the steps to add the cart selection screen before the track selection screen. At a high level, what we need to do to implement a cart selection screen is by doing the following. Firstly, we'll download another cart from the asset store and configure it as a spawnable mirror player. Secondly, we're going to create a cart select scene and configure it. Thirdly, we're going to create a player preferences script to store the user selected cart. This will stay as an offline preference on the client. The fourth thing we'll do is create a new empty player prefab, because now we'll be spawning the carts into the scene instead of having the cart attached to the player prefab. Attached to the player prefab will create the cart selection UI components which will trigger the cart selections in a script. Next we'll create and add that new cart selection script onto the player prefab. The fifth thing we'll need to do is reconfigure our network room manager. And lastly, we'll need to reconfigure the cam follow and keyboard input script since they need to be updated to work with the new logic. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get stuck into it. I'm going to use the project I uploaded in the previous tutorial as the basis for this one. If you want to follow along, go to my level select tutorial. Click the more button in the description, then click the download link. Extract the files, then we're going to open the project in Unity Hub. Now that our project is open, the first thing we want to do is get another cart so we can add it as an option to select in game. To prepare, we will go to the asset store and download another cart. If we open the prefab, we will see it's configured basically the same as the stock carting player prefab. We're going to relocate it to the same folder as the other prefabs by dragging and dropping it in. Now we need to open the tiny cart prefab again and add some components to get it up to speed. We're going to add the network transform and then set the sync direction from client to server. We'll then add the network rigid body and also set the sync direction from client to server and also set client authority. We're going to add the shoot projectile script, assign the projectile prefab, and then create a new projectile spawn position and then assign that to the script. We're going to add the cam follow script. We'll add the player input manager and then reassign the player prefab. We'll then add the player input component and then change behavior to invoke Unity events. We'll assign new karting to the UI input module. We will then fix the Unity events by reassigning the inputs to their keyboard input functions, including horizontal, accelerate, and break. We'll now exit the prefab. At this point, we just want to see if our new cart is working. So we're just going to temporarily assign it as a player prefab in the network room manager and then press play. It seems to be working as expected. You might have noticed that the new cart drives extremely different to the old one. If we compare the arcade cart scripts between the prefabs, we can see that Unity has deliberately made this cart drive very differently. Now we're going to create the cart select scene, which we intend to slot after the intro scene, but before the track select scene. We need to remember to add this scene to the build settings and drag it under the intro menu scene. This scene will be set up very simple. We just want to create a plane for the carts to spawn onto, set a spawn point, and then set up the camera to look at them. We'll start by creating the plane. For the spawn point, we'll create an empty game object in the scene, we'll rename it to spawn, and then add the network start position component. We'll move it a little bit up on the Y axis so the player drops into the scene. We'll also relocate the camera so it watches the players spawn into the scene. We'll create a UI event system so the player can interact with the UI controls. This scene's now basically complete and we can come back to tweak it later if we want. We now need to load the intro scene. We'll open up the Network Room Manager and create the Player Preferences script. We're now going to open up the Player Preferences script. This Player Preferences script is going to be extremely simple. We'll start by creating a public string, cart preference, and we'll give it a default value of cart1. This script will be a singleton, so we're going to declare that. Now in the start block, we're just going to assign the singleton. The beauty of a singleton is that providing there's only one instance of it in the project, it makes it really nice and easy to reference it from other scripts. We'll just save and close that script. Now we need to create a new empty player prefab to spawn the carts. 
In the scene we're in, we'll create a new empty game object. We'll name it player, and then we'll drag and drop it into our prefabs folder. Now we'll delete it from the scene, and then we'll double click on it to open it up. At the root of the prefab, we want to create a new cart select script. Now we'll just open it up. This script will do most of the heavy lifting in terms of selecting the cart and spawning it into the scene. Once the script is loaded, we'll get it to use mirror as well as the scene management classes, and then we'll change it from mono to network behavior. We'll create two public game objects called selected car and UI elements. When this script starts, we want to turn off the UI elements game object. If we're not the local player and we're not in the cart select scene, then turn the UI elements off. Now we want the script to turn off the OK button if we're not the server. We'll do this by checking to see if we're not the server, use the UI elements to find the OK game object child, and then set active to false. We're now going to create the cart spawn function that runs on the server. We're going to set the authority to false so any client can run it. We're going to call it cmd spawn, and it will take a parameter of a car name string. The first part of this function is going to try to find the cart prefab on the network manager based on the car name string we're passing into the function. Next, we want the server to destroy whatever the current cart is, or else we would keep getting extra carts each time we run the function. Now we want to instantiate the new cart on the server, and then we want to call the spawn function, which will then spawn it on all of the clients. Now we want to create an override for the onStart local player function under network behavior. If you'd like to know more about these, let me know in the comments. We're going to create a temporary saved car pref variable and populate it by getting the car preference from the local running instance. If this variable is not null, we're going to try and spawn it on the server. We're now going to build two small functions which will be called by the UI buttons we're going to create very soon. The first function called pick car will set the player preference in the local running instance and then spawn the cart from the server. The next function called load scene will check if it's the server and if it is, it'll go ahead and load the next scene. Now we just need to save and close our script. We now need to build the canvas and UI buttons which will call the functions we just created in the cart select script. We'll start by creating a canvas and call it cart select UI. We'll then assign cart select UI under UI elements. We'll create some basic text which will tell the player what to do. And now we're going to create two cart selection buttons. We will now create the OK button, which will only show on the host and will allow them to advance to the track select scene. We'll then set the instruction test and center it. Now we'll just update the labels for each of the buttons. And now we'll just reposition them on the canvas. For the cart select buttons, we need to tell it to call the pick car function that we wrote in the cart select script. We also need to tell it the name of the cart we want to spawn. This needs to match the actual name of the cart prefab, which we will fix later. The OK button needs to call the load scene function we wrote, and we will pass in the name of the track select scene. Now we need to go to our cart prefabs and rename them based on the names we chose in the UI buttons. We can now close the player prefab. We now need to go back to our network room manager and reconfigure it. We'll now set the new player prefab. Then update the gameplay scene to the cart select scene. Then we want to add two new spawnable prefabs. And we'll assign the two cart prefabs. Now we do have some old scripts we still need to update, but for now we'll do a quick test to make sure that what we've done works okay. You can see now we've got two cart spawning buttons and also the OK button which will only show on the server. After the track select, the correct car spawns in the scene which is really good. As you can see though, we do need to fix up the camera and also the keyboard controls. We're just going to open up the cart1 prefab. We'll fix up the keyboard input script first. This is a very simple change. We just need to replace any reference to the if this is local player and change it to if is owned. The reason we have to do this is because the carts are no longer the local player game object, but are now spawned as extra objects in the scene, but are owned by the players. Now we just need to open the cam follow script and apply the same change there. Now we're going to run our final test before testing it multiplayer.
As you can see now, the camera and controls are working as they should be. Now to test multiplayer, I'm just going to do a build and run so I can run a separate instance of the game. I'll run the host from the compiled game and run the client from the editor. You can see if we click the cart on one of the games, it spawns the cart on both sides. If we click the cart in the other game, it'll do the same thing. Both of the selected carts are able to spawn in the selected track scene, and we can control them both via keyboard. This basically sums up the tutorial. If you found this useful, please consider a like and subscribe for more tutorials like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.